Good morning and welcome to the weekly dementia blog. These are being sponsored again by SpectraMed every single week. My name is Dr. David Hutchings. Uh, we just finished up with a really cool series on uh, what to do after the diagnosis and we're going to continue to talk about that next week. Uh, last week we discussed um, behaviors and the week before we discussed sundowning and some of the environment, environmental modifications that we can put in place as well as the pharmacological interventions, which definitely you need to look at both of those to address those issues. Um, next week we're really going to talk about um, some other things that happen after the diagnosis, such as driving issues, bathing issues, um, you know, uh, depression that we see with the patient and the caregiver. So we're going to continue that series. One of the questions that I get a lot, more so than often, is, is uh, again, the genetic pieces that, that come up here. So I want to talk about this as late onset Alzheimer's disease, which is defined by acquiring the condition at or around the age of 80. So if we have a family history, even if you have the apple lipoprotein um, gene and you have that, it does not necessarily mean it's gonna mutate just because of the family history. There are many other factors that play into that. So age is the biggest predictor. So by the time we reach age uh, 80, our, our chances of, uh, of acquiring late onset Alzheimer's disease increases to about 50%. Now, there are other forms of dementia, uh, Alzheimer's in particular, that are earlier onset and somewhat um, uh, other gene mutations that are quite rare that are much more genetic related. But for our conversation this morning, let's talk about late onset Alzheimer's disease and what are some of the warning signs that we see. I will say is that as we get older, our brains begin to shrink by weight and volume by about 30% by the age of 30. So think about the brain as this, this amazing computer that God has created and, 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 and as we get older, it begins to have some atrophy, slower in working memory and slower in processing. Think of it like an older computer, okay? So as we get older and you reach well past 85, 86, into your 90s, um, some patients can actually look like they have Alzheimer's disease, which in fact, it's called a hippocampal um, sclerosis. Okay, so we've, we've seen patients with this before. Uh, I've actually diagnosed individuals with Alzheimer's disease and later found out that it was a hippocampal um, sclerosis, which we you know, do the autopsy and we see that there's no plaques and tangles. So that's just aging. It's not incredibly um, uh, something that, uh, again, it, it will kind of mirror Alzheimer's a little bit, but it's not Alzheimer's disease. So in an essence, we can basically, you might be able to outlive your Alzheimer's disease. Um, so with some of the things that we see that are not a part of normal aging and some of the 10 warning signs I wanted to cover, number one is short-term memory loss that, dis, and this is very important, that disrupts your daily life and daily functions and daily activities. Maybe we can have difficulty planning or solving problems. Difficulty completing familiar tasks. Maybe it's a recipe that we've cooked for years. Maybe it's um, you know a task that we do at church or or whatever that might be. Um, and then also confusion with time, orientation, and place. Uh, another one is uh, problems finding words. We call this aphasia. If you want to get technical, it's called Broca's aphasia. And we have difficulty actually finding words or um, remembering names. I did have a patient a family member come up to me one day and said, I can't remember my third grade teacher's name. Is this, uh, could this be Alzheimer's disease? This is not something that this individual probably has thought about for many years. And so it's the brain kind of de, uh, de, uh, carp basically puts that into an area that it's not needed. So it's not retrieved very often. So it would be hard to remember that. That's not Alzheimer's disease. Um, so definitely with the problems with finding words uh, or even writing. Misplacing objects uh, throughout the home, uh, losing objects. Um, and, you know, we, you might take this as a joke, but I've seen this many times. It's uh, we always misplace our keys, right, to your to your vehicle and you find them. But it's not necessarily normal to find those keys, maybe in a refrigerator or something like that, which, again, I've seen that. Uh, poor judgment, and this uh, can definitely come with finances. It can come with um, doing things around the house, safety reasons, and even driving, uh, which we're going to talk about in the upcoming weeks. And the last two, I would say, changes in personality and mood, as well as a decreased social activities. 
And with the pandemic that's going on right now with COVID and social isolation and social distancing, um, we're starting to see such an increase in pseudo dementia and which is dementia um, uh, because of depression. And we see this affecting the caregivers as well as um, uh, the patients themselves. So again, it's not always genetic. Uh, we look at, and we've talked about this before in an article I published earlier this year, which is uh, changes in lifestyle, diet, exercise, cognitive exercise, sleep hygiene. You know, these things can certainly help uh, ward off that gene from being mutated. So again, next week we're going to continue the series of what to do after the diagnosis. We are going to talk about issues with using the restroom, issues with dressing, driving, um, and also uh, really kind of hit head on with depression with um, patients as well as caregivers. So again, uh, thank you. Thank you for all the questions and clinical questions that keep coming in. Um, and uh, we will see you guys again uh, next week. Thank you.